It's time for Friday Night Flights. Now, here's sports director Bruce Rader. And here we go. The third week of September, the cream starts rising to the top, and already tonight, some key games on both sides of the water as the Hampton Roads High School football season heats up. Were there any upsets? Let's find out. Friday Night Flights starts now. I'm Bruce Rader. For the past decade, Oscar Smith has ruled the Southeastern District. Ten straight championships, national rankings year after year. Coach Richard Morgan has sent countless players on to play major college football tonight. Oscar Smith looking for its hundred and I'm sorry, its 67th consecutive conference win, taking on unbeaten Western Branch. An absolutely crazy crowd on hand. It's 28 nothing, Oscar Smith. But check out this play. Western Branch junior quarterback Daniel Griffith to Giancarlo Barrios, who pulls it in with one hand. What a grab. And on the very next play, it may have been even better. Look at Corey Gray as he gets the pass. Looks like he's tackled, but no, he's not down. Instead, he's in for the touchdown. The Bruins cut the lead to 28 to 14. But once again, Oscar Smith would rule the night. Tigers quarterback Sean Mitchell threw for, get this, six touchdowns. This one to Anthony Elliott and Oscar Smith rolls on to a 56 to 14 win, but the win is not on the minds of coach Richard Morgan and the Tiger Nation tonight. Instead, an injury to the team's best player shocked everyone at the game. Josh Sweat, one of the top defensive ends in the nation this year, suffered an injury to either his leg or his knee just before halftime. The game was stopped while doctors attended to him. He was then taken away in an ambulance. We're not sure of his condition. Hopefully it's not too bad, but a tough thing to watch happen to one of America's top high school football players tonight. Kikitan, meanwhile, on the peninsula, led by their outstanding quarterback, Desmond Savage, taking on the Hampton Crabbers. A thriller tonight. Coming into tonight's game, Kikitan had lost 16 straight to Hampton on Kikitan's first drive. The inside handoff to JC on Fugati. He rips through the Crabbers defense for the first of many touchdowns tonight. Mike Smith's Crabbers always come back. Check out this 53-yard touchdown pass. Javon Quillen to Tyquan Wilkins. And how about this for a top 10 highlight for you? As Savage back to pass, it's Tyler Kristen. Check this out as he leaps over a Crabber defender and takes a penalty out of bounds. And this is what I just love about the quarterback Desmond Savage. Watch this. He feels the pressure. He's scrambling on the run. He throws into the back of the end zone, and there he will find Bugatti for the touchdown. But Hampton with a chance to win with seconds to go. Bo Lomax, his time expires with the field goal and to win the game 37 to 34 for Hampton. Uh, and they knock off Kikitan 37 to 34. Unbeaten Ocean Lakes tonight on the road to Green Run and the Stallions of Green Run were stingy in the first half. Check out this 40 yard field goal by Ocean Lakes kicker, Johan de Pickard. This is a high school kick. Hey, let me tell you something. This would have been good from 50 yards out. Ocean Lakes takes a three to nothing lead and then the defense comes up with a big play. Lawrence Baranski is gonna pick off Austin Lynch. He's gonna return it inside the five yard line, but the Stallions defense held. Ocean Lakes couldn't get it in the end zone. Green Run put together a nice drive just before halftime. Check out the great run by quarterback Austin Lynch right into your living room as he dives for the pylon and gets the Stallions on the board. That's his first rushing touchdown ever for Lynch and Green Run led seven to three at the half. I don't know what coach Chris Scott from Ocean Lake said to his kids at halftime, but the Dolphins roared back. Brendan O'Neill shows some quickness, darts inside, gets the touchdown. Ocean Lakes takes a four-point halftime deficit and turns it into a 45-10 win over Green Run to remain undefeated. And we have a first-timer on Friday Night Flights tonight as we welcome Deanna LeBlanc to the show. And welcome. Thank you. It was a great night for football, a great night to be flying around up in Chopper 10. Uh, Suffolk was our destination. We first stopped at Kings Forks and the Bulldogs, who had not allowed a single point heading into tonight's game against Grassfield. But that would come to an end tonight. Grassfield in red down 7-3 to three until wide receiver Grant Holloway gets the ball on the end around and takes it in for the score. There it is. Grassfield up 10 to 3. The Bulldogs would respond when Deshaun Williams takes the handoff. We'll see it there in a second. Goes 50 yards before getting knocked out of bounds. 
setting up a tying field goal, and Kings Fork stays undefeated after tonight's 19-10 win over Grassfield. And we've really had a great view from the sky tonight, high above King Forks High School in Chopper 10. We got to the game just before halftime, and during the halftime show, we caught two really cute performances. First this, they're calling it Baby Bulldogs. Little kids get a chance to work on some pass runs with the high school principal. He tells me he wants to get the younger kids excited and interested in school spirit early on. So they gave the kids t-shirts too, and this is the first night they've tried this Baby Bulldogs program, but now it will happen at all the home games, and if those kids wear their t-shirts to a home game, they get in for free. Just because this is our future, and we want to encourage them to start building that school pride into becoming a bulldog that they're going to be in the future. And the other cute kids of the night, the little girls at cheer camp, they got to perform with the varsity squad, which for them was such a thrill. They even helped us throw out some of the wavy TV 10 footballs. And now we travel to Norfolk for a game between two undefeated teams. No kids here. Perennial power Lake Taylor hosting its rivals from Norview. And Lake Taylor jumps out to a 35 to nothing lead. And as much as we talk about the Titans offense, how about their defense? Norview quarterback EJ Fazy in a sack by Preshanti Wilkins in the backfield. And even when EJ managed to get a pass off, here into the flats to Sean Brown. Nyree Nile, Quinterly is there for the hit. Lake Taylor very impressive this season, outscoring its opponents 123 to 31 in their first four games as they pitch a shutout tonight, 35 to nothing. It was military appreciation night at Churchland High School. The truckers taking on Granby, who are led by a new coach this year. No score, first drive for the Comets in white. Justin Moore goes long. Nice adjustment from Danielle Hiramuse to make the very tough catch. And then on the very next play, the truckers produce some defense. The pass is picked off by Kamanti Hall, the sophomore. And the truckers are inside Granby territory. They take advantage, Malik Sexton up top to Mike Huff and the junior is in for the score as the Churchland Truckers go on for the 28-14 win. Now on to the Friday Night Flight scoreboard. Bayside shuts out Tallwood tonight. Lansdowne 24-6 over First Colonial. And Cox with a shutout win over Princess Anne and the Salem Sun Devils 49-7 over Kempsville. And still to come, Lafayette tries to remain unbeaten but standing in the Rams' way, a tough Grafton Clippers team. And Chopper 10 heads back to Suffolk where Nansman River went head to head with Great Bridge. We're the Tallwood Cheerleaders! Don't go away! Bruce and Deanna will be right back with more Friday Night Flights! Marching Lions of Tallwood High School under the direction of Tim Rossettini, the Friday Night Flights Band of the Week. Yeah, watch their entire performance on Wavy.com. There's also slideshows, top 10 plays, and all of that's on Wavy.com. All right, let's go back to Suffolk now, where Nansman River is off to a really nice start this season. Yeah, the Warriors trying to improve to 3-0 and under first-year head coach Dave Coakley. Nansman River tanking on great bridge push-ups for the Warriors cheerleaders after every Warriors score. Good for them. First quarter, Warriors in black down seven until running back Terrence Lambert takes the handoff and scores to tie the game up. The Wildcats would respond when quarterback Jacob Wilson hits Andrew Harmon for the score, and Great Bridge would hand Nansman River their first defeat as the Wildcats would go on to win. 35-31. And as I mentioned, Nansman River football has a new man in charge. Last year, the Warriors ended the season with a losing record 4-7, and seven, but new coach Dave Coakley started the season off strong. The team went into tonight 2-0. and oh. Now, despite their tough loss this evening to Great Bridge, the student section was big, and the kids are excited. Going into to tonight's game, this was the best start to a season they've had in 15 years. I've heard a lot of good things about them. Makes the guys work really hard and stuff. So I mean, I hear that I think it's going to be a really good year. We're having a really great season. You know, we started out two and zero, beat a strong team, Grassfield. They're six A school. We're four A. We can really make a push this year. You know, we really got it this year. Tonight was the first home game of the season, and the kids were pumped to have two wins under their team's belt. They tell me they'll hope they hope this will be an exciting year.
Now it already on, has been. Oh, I mean, they were having so much fun out there. It was great. So was I. And now let's head up to the peninsula where the Grafton Clippers were home at Bailey Field. And they had a tough draw tonight, Deanna. The always tough and currently undefeated Lafayette Rams from Williamsburg. You know, we love these Bay mm -hmm. River Districts games. Lafayette and White. John Douglas. Now he stopped away. Uh, well, no, no, maybe he's not stopped. Uh -oh. In fact, he's off to the races. He breaks free. He rumbles down the field for a huge game until Grafton's Tavares Noel. Noel catches him to stop him from the end zone. The cheerleaders in Grafton keeping the crowd in it. But Lafayette's ground game rule tonight. Joey Kragenbrink around the corner for six points. I gotta tell you, look at these fans. They're crazy, the best in the country. Lafayette with three touchdowns in the first half. Kyle Johnson is so quick, he fakes out the cameraman, gets into the end zone for another Ram touchdown. A big game for John Douglas tonight as Lafayette wins it. 42 to 20. There he is again to remain unbeaten in the Bay Rivers district. Staying in the Bay Rivers, the coast and in Bruton Square off. The Islanders scored on their first drive with a few running plays, capped off by this touchdown run by number 87, Nathan Ward. The Bruton Panthers took over from there, though. Quarterback Greg Dockery with a nice pass to get the home team amped up for the game. Dockery can pass and he can run, leading his team to a victory over Pocosin tonight. The Bruton Panthers, 20-7 over the Pocosin Islanders. New Kent with a big 41-14 win over Jamestown. York over Warhill, 20-2. A Tidewater Conference opener tonight for both Nansman Suffolk and Bishop Sullivan, both coming into the game with 3-1 and one records. We're going to pick up the action in the third quarter. Bishop Sullivan in green, that is Kevin Hicks. Bursting up the middle for the touchdown. Over 200 yards rushing tonight for Hicks. Now on to the fourth quarter. You've heard the name Blake LaRussa. Last year, leading his team to a state championship. This year, lets it fly. Connects with George Wacky, leading, leading to another Crusader touchdown. Bishop Sullivan with a big 62-40 win over Nansman. Suffolk Academy, a lot of points in that one. Oh, yeah, and another win for Norcom. The Greyhounds improved to 4-0 with a 34-6 win over Maury. Hickory defeats Deep Creek 42-9. And get this, Steve Smallwood had 18 tackles in Surrey County's 28-3 win over West Point Heritage 28, Minchville 7. The Marching Lions of Tallwood High School, the Friday Night Flights Band of the Week. Their entire performance is on wavy.com right now, so you can go to it and check it out. And more scores. Northeastern of Elizabeth City defeated Wilson Franklin 64-32 over Charles City. Atlantic Shores one-point winners over Christ Church. Isle of Wight shuts out Brunswick. And if you want to watch tonight's show again or any part of the Friday Night Flights episodes from this season, just log on to wavy.com. And you can check Twitter and all kinds of extra stuff too. Yeah, there's my Twitter page. I posted lots of pictures from my adventure tonight in Chopper 10, so check it out way at uh, Deanna underscore wavy. All right, slide shows from the games, the band of the week, and top 10 plays from each week. And every week, they're all there. Hey, great job hey, tonight to be a sportscaster. <laughs> Another night of Friday Night Flights. Join us every Friday night. I'm Bruce Rader. Have a great weekend, everybody. Hey.